good morning, everyone. Welcome to the United Methodist Church of Hornell. I have an announcement today. Um, because of unseen circumstances, there will be no Sunday school today. Just, we'll start next week. Uh, hopefully, everything will be better next week. So for today, there will be no Sunday school for unseen circumstances. Uh, is there any other announcements? We're glad you're here today. Glad you're here. Any other announcements? If you notice, I have no glasses on today. <laughs> All these beautiful faces, I can see a lot better. <laughs> Is there any announcements anymore? No more announcements? Do we have any joys or concerns this morning? Uh, but we have a niece that's down in Arna Ogden uh, with the COVID, and she's on respirator and pneumonia in both lungs. I just want to give the real good news, and that's that my brother is coming home on Wednesday right back to his apartment, and he's doing very, very well, and that was after COVID, and that was after he was on a ventilator. So even though it seemed uh, touch and go a lot, you know, he pulled through, so I hope your loved one does also. Um, continued prayers, please. I am making progress, and I'm going to be getting a spinal injection on the 25th. Thank you. Um, I would just like prayers for my aunt and uncle. Um, many of you probably know them, Toby and Harriet Hollister. My uncle had to go in um, a nursing home kind of unexpectedly He, after a couple of falls. And my aunt is now living on her own, um, and they've been together almost 70 years. So it's a real adjustment for both of them. Um, my aunt is doing a little bit better after um, a week or so, but just continued prayers. Thank you. I don't know if some of you saw my post that I put on UMC support, but my <laughs> two oldest grandchildren on their mother's side lost their grandmother before Christmas, and a week later they lost their grandfather uh, on their mother's side, and they're, they're struggling right now. Um, so they were very close to their grandfather. I think we have a joy because we can meet together and worship together here in the church. A lot of places that. are still not. And we still have very big concerns for our country. Yeah. So what about, I know that we're concerned about this COVID and about our country and everything else. How's it sound if we have a night like on a Wednesday night or something like that, and just come in and pray. Don't you think we need to get back to prayer? And we could just come in and, and sit in a sanctuary, and, and we can just pray 
whatever you want to pray. In today's sermon, we'll give you a little hint on how to pray, how to pray. So if you're interested in that, just let me know, and I will gladly set it up. We can get some people to help, and we can just set it all up. So if it sounds good to you, say amen. All righty. Is there any more joys or concerns? Day like that, that the Bills won, right, Jordan? Bills won. <laughs> yes. Uh, a lot of you know the Dye family because the Dye family did our chicken barbecues for the youth group. Well, Tom Dye lost his house to a fire. Totally lost uh, a couple days ago. Total loss. Um, he has no insurance on the house. So I'm just letting you know that there is a fund out for him to help build, rebuild a house or something for him. It's online. You can check it out. But um, you need prayers for the Dye family because they've had a rough three years. Um, 2019, they lost their mother. 2020, they lost a brother and a father. And 221... 2021, they lost a house, so they need prayers. Any more joys or concerns? Let us pray. Gracious Father, you've heard our concerns, you've heard our joys. We praise you for all the joys, and we pray to you for healing for all the concerns. So Lord, we just ask that you lift each and every one of us up. Help us to get back to prayer. Help us to connect with you in always. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll do the Lord's Prayer at the end of the service. Stand if you're able or in spirit and join us to the call to worship. Celebrate the Lord. Let God's joy spill from your hearts, your voices, your lives. God is totally trustworthy. The Lord has everything covered. Then instead of worrying, spend time thinking about what is true. And do not forget to give thanks. Thank you, God. We celebrate you. Join us in the opening hymn.
turn to one another and say, I'm glad you're here and we're glad we're in the house of God. Children, would you like to come up for a story? Come up and sit on the purple axes up here. You can sit together if you'd like. You're, you're sisters, right? I think. <laughs> Well, good morning. How are you folks today? Thumbs up, I got over here. Do you know what I have in my hand right here? It's a remote control, right? What can you do with a remote control? You can turn TVs on, maybe a stereo, right? So if I was to point this, at my lights right back up here, these lights, do you think that I could shut them off? Let me see. Oh my goodness, wow. That remote control did that, didn't it? Right, okay, now what if, what if I was to point at a couple people out here to stand up, we think they'd do it? No, let me see, well turn around, let me see, let's see. Turn around, turn around, let's see, okay. Boy, oh boy, look at that. They stood right up at my remote control. Well, what about if I point up to the organist and, and point and see if she would do anything? Here. Oh. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that, that's amazing, isn't it? Now, what if I was to set it over here? Okay? It won't do anything, right? If I'm not pushing the button, it won't work, right? Did you know that, that each one of you are like a remote control? Did you know that? Because God has plans for each one of you. And the thing about it is, the only way that that'll work, that you are a remote control, is by placing yourselves in God's hands. In God's hands. If you place yourself in God's hands and you trust God, he will give you great things to do. Just like if I pick up that remote control. You have to place yourself in God's hand and trust that he will be with you for those great things that you're going to do. Because, you know, as you grow, God is going to give you more and more and more to do as long as you trust him and you place yourself in his hands. Because we all know that God's in control, right? He's in control of everything. So remember that, that you are like a remote control. That if you place yourself in God's hands, he will give you great things to do. Shall we pray? Lord, we just ask you to be with these young people, that you will give them great things to do. Because we need all the help we can to make things work in this world. And the only way we can do that is by placing ourselves in your hands so that you can take control. And we ask this in your glorious and precious name. Amen. You can go to Jonah Church. Miss Trina's taken into Junior Church.
Stand if you're able in spirit and join us in the next hymn. Gracious Father, we are so thankful that the people here today and the people that are not are so supportive of you and your church, and we are so thankful that we are still allowed to worship in your house. We praise you for all of this, and I know that you have a job for us all in this year to come. So Lord, I ask that you just lift each and every one of us up. Help us to open our hearts and our minds to it. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I'm reading from the King James Version. <clears throat> this is to the pastor. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. <laughs> I think we were supposed to learn that from last Sunday. This is Psalm 55, verses 22 and 23. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O oh God, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. 
but I will trust in you. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is Philippians. This is a letter that Paul wrote to the Philippians. This is a part of it. Chapter 4, verses 6 through 13. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked the opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Carol. So we're on our second week on this fear not. So what we're going to cover this week is fear has a proper place if we put it in the hands of God, right? We just need to put that in God's hands and think many of us do not ever stop to think about how we, we hold on to fear and anxiety throughout the day instead of immediately giving it back to God. We all hang on to that fear, but we need to give it to God. Be encouraged by learning it is possible to live free. It is possible to live free from fear and anxiety. And be aware of, of the response to the difficult adverse, in, adverse situations and adjust as needed. To have more faithful response. So let us pray. Lord, we need help and guidance through the many trials and troubles we face. All these troubles and trials that we face in our life today. Give us the strength and response to, to have faith with gratitude and thanksgiving. No matter what the situation we are in. Amen. Amen. So welcome. Today begins the second week of our four-week series titled Fear Not. Last week we talked about the healthy and unhealthy fear 
and the importance of recognizing the difference, the difference when we respond appropriately. We learned that God did not, that God did not give us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and self-discipline. Today we are going to be hearing again from the Apostle Paul as we go a step further in learning how to respond appropriately to unhealthy fear. How many practice this week the self-discipline that I asked you to do last week? I hope you did. Because we all need to practice that self-discipline and recognize between healthy and unhealthy fear. For many of us, fear and anxiety are ever-ready response to trouble in this life. It is so deeply ingrained in our thinking that we could say fear has become a habit for most of us. How many of us have a habit? I've been trying to work on a habit for the last, I don't know, a few weeks on exercising. A lot of us need to figure that habit out. Because if you don't have that habit, you just kind of set it aside. So I've been working on that habit to exercise, to become more healthy in the way that we all need to be. The good news is that, like any other habit, you can develop new ones in place of old ones. At the end of this, of his letter of Philippian church, the Apostle Paul gives the numerous appeals that they are, that there are in, verse, in two verses in particular that are important today. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. How many here would like to be free of fear and anxiety? I would. We all would. I think we can all agree that fear and anxiety are are closely related. We can also agree that living a life completely free from all fear and anxiety sounds too good to be true. Paul sounds delusional when when he says do not be anxious about anything that's hard to do it's very hard to do how it, how is that possible to be free from all anxiety Paul has ever seen, Paul has never seen the rush hour traffic or a mortgage to be paid. He is, he, has he ever lived with social media? That gives you enough anxiety to do anything. Social media. Does he have to worry about health care, deductibles, your credit card being hacked. He does not have any idea the difficult and troublesome 
it is to live in today's world. Well, it is true that Paul lived in a very different time and experienced life in a very different way than we do today. It is also true that he has just might know what he is talking about, what he's talking about. He says, five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. And three times I was shipwrecked. And I spent the night and day in open sea. I have been const constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in dangers from fellow Jews, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger from the city, in danger from the, from the country, in danger at the sea, and in danger with false believers. I have labored and to toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily pressure of my concern for all the churches. I didn't make this up. It's in 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 28. I didn't make it up. Because God, uh, Paul went through the same problems that we do today, but in a different way. In a different way. Paul has much experience as any of us with trials and tribulations. He has an ample opportunity to be scared out of his mind and to work through fear and anxiety. He says himself that he deals with daily concern over all the churches he's worked with in light of all this, he also says, I have learned the secret of being content in any, in every situation. That's in Philippians 4, 11 and 2, 12. What if Paul knew the secret to living life free from fear and anxiety? What if he truly knew how to live deeply content in satisfied life? Wouldn't you want to know if he did? Let me give you a little secret. In order to know all that, we need to give it to God. We truly need to give it all to God. He is our strength. I know it sounds too simple. And I know it sounds too Christian. And I know it feels like the answer should be more complicated for such a complex and destructive problem. But I also know it is true. The secret that Paul learned about fear and anxiety and worry is that they belong in the hands of God. Not ours. The secret sauce is gratitude laced prayer in every circumstance and situation you find yourself in. 
It is not that fear and anxiety and worry and doubt and etc. don't exist. It's where we put it. We need to put it in the proper place. The difficulty, of course, is developing the habit in which you place those troublesome situations and circumstances in the hands of God instead of holding on to them yourself. Let me say that last part again. The difficulty is developing the habit in which you place those troublesome situations and circumstances into the hands of God. I remember we need to make God's request known. One of the things I love about God is that he is not surprised about the way we feel. He's formed you and knit you together in the womb. He's numbered your days and he knows every hair on your head. He doesn't have to count too many on mine. But he knows every hair. I can guarantee he does not think you are irresponsible that your fear of clowns is silly. Or that your anxiety about getting cancer someday means you somehow have less faith than others. But I also know he wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from you in everything by prayer and petition and thanksgiving and to present your request to God. So let us practice this one together. Your prayer and request might sound something like this. Thank you, Lord. For the home we have. Thank you for providing shelter, warmth, and protection from the sun and rain. I don't know how we're going to pay the mortgage this month, but I know you do. Please calm our hearts and guide our steps. Amen. Or, thank you, Lord, for my dad. I love how hard he works and how Every Saturday morning, he brings donuts back for us. He's been drinking again, Lord, and I'm scared, and I do not know what's going to happen. And sometimes he gets really angry. Please help me, Lord, and please keep us safe. Amen. Or, thank you, Lord, for the first 70 years you've given me. I could spend days reaccounting the endless blessings and grace you have poured over this life. I am so completely humbled by your faithfulness. I received cancer diagnosis yesterday, and I know you are not surprised to hear that. But I am so scared. I am terrified to start chemo. I'm terrified to tell the kids I do not know who will organize Thanksgiving or Christmas if I am gone. I need to know you are here with me. 
I need to know that <clears throat> this will be okay one way or another. And I need to know that if I am gone, that someone will help my husband eat three healthy meals a day. Thank you for hearing me, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> These prayers will not be the same ones that you will pray. But you get the idea. We present our request with thanksgiving to God. And when we are faithful to put our fear and anxiety in its proper place, we can expect that peace will follow. Expect peace. As you pray through fear, trouble, and adversity, etc. Make sure that you, at the same time, hold expectation that God will come through on his end of the deal. I cannot logically explain peace and transcend, transcends in under, all understanding. But I can tell you that I believe it is possible. And I can tell you it is amazing. I remember after my diagnosis that I had cancer. I remember being afraid and uncertain of what my future would be. But you know, deep down in, I felt peace. I felt peace, and I don't know how to explain it, but I felt it. Later on in the Philippians, after Paul says he has learned the secret to being content in every situation, he says, I can do anything I'm sorry, I could do everything through him who gives me strength. You know what that verse is, right? Philippians 4, 13. Paul knows that we need to know that in the hands of God, through the power of Christ, anything is possible. I know that there are some here today who have their doubts. And I know that there are some who are facing impossible situations. Terrifying medical diagnosis and adversity. I know that a life free from fear and anxiety seems completely crazy. All I can ask is that you commit this coming week to develop a more faithful response in every circumstance and situation. I said earlier that the difficulty is developing a habit in which you place your troublesome situations and circumstances into the hands of God. We are all remote controls. We just have to hand it to God. Give it to Him. Let us commit together this week to changing our habits by letting go of the fear and anxiety and worry And expect a divine peace that transcends all understanding. And I know this world seems like it's upside down. 
But we need to let that go. We need to give it all over to God. Because he's still king. He's still our savior. I suggest you take the time every morning to write out a few prayers like the ones I shared earlier. Begin and end your prayers with gratitude. Name your request to the Lord and trust the process. Throughout the day, as trouble comes, practice the same thing by audibly thanking God and naming your request to him. So what if you're standing in your middle of your job and all of a sudden you scream to the Lord, say, Lord, help me. So what if they look at you? Right? So what? Make it known to God. I fear that Christians are afraid to express their faith. We need to be more. We need to do more of that. I trust that these small steps will lead to a big breakthrough. A breakthrough for you over time. There is so much unhealthy fear in our world today, and much of it is legitimate reasons. It is time we as believers recognize it and start putting it in the proper place. The proper place is in the almighty ever capable hands of God. We just need to trust and put those things in God's hands. Are you willing to put things things in God's hands? And don't be afraid to let God know what is needed. But do it with gratitude and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with each and every one of us today. That you will be with us as we take this week. Help us to write down these prayers and be audible to you. Let you know our request, but do it with gratitude and thanksgiving. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Stand if you're able in spirit and join us in the closing hymn.
blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Oh, there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness in Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of Remember to let God know what is your request. Go in peace and love of Christ in your hearts. Amen.